Crests are meant to be a bit of a rare oddity in the succulent world. Well, I've visited James Lucas and all of a sudden I'm seeing about 30 different varieties. So in his nursery, they're not quite so rare. And we're going to take a really close look at succulent crests. So over to James. This is Moon Godonis. This I would give first in a show. It's got perfect shape, texture, form. It's almost three dimensional. It is absolutely beautiful specimen, brain like in structure. This is like number one. This is why you grow crests. But crests are a very unusual oddity. You know, quite rare in nature, and they're only an occasional occurrence. But luckily, in the succulent world, we can actually propagate them. And they're not as propagatable as leaf cuttings on other plants or other general cuttings. It's actually grow slow, limited plant material, and things like that. So yeah, I think that's um, subsessilis, that one. And this is a new one here, John. This is low. We, we got that in Korea a couple of years ago. It goes the most brilliant red in winter. Absolutely fabulous colors in winter. Yep. But that's, a, that's a different crest. This actually has lots of round heads on it. Whereas this one here, this is a classic crest, which is the line of growth coming through here and going down around there. See that line over here? See, it's just that's the classic sort of form of crest. So the first one that really took my eye was this one here. I mean, I guess the brilliant foliage and the fact that you've got it in a, a great pot, great dish, and I've got to tell you now that Kate has freshened up the top dressing on that Did as you? well. Oh, yeah, good, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah, look, that's um, Ikevira chocolate. That's one of my favourites. This is uh, one of my old ones. This is probably about seven years old. And really, I, I think it's really due for a pot up and a clean up. Um, but it's been a magnificent plant and I've actually won prizes with this at shows. You know, you have to pull out the dead leaves a bit and clean it up a little bit more before you show them. But that is one of the problems you get with crests. They are inclined to retain some of the dead leaves. You can see on this one here. And what you do is you get tweezers and you've got to really clean them periodically. So there's a little bit of servicing to do on these plants. And when we look at these two aeoniums, they're different, but the same. So, yeah. Well, they are crests, both are crests. But what it is, is there's two forms of crests. Well, there's actually probably three. One is where you get this line of growth going through here, and from there it grows many apical points through here and it goes down. But this one has formed multiple small heads. Now, this Aonum is very much like Mr. Low here, and many headed, right? Whereas some of them are just classical, like this one here, just classical line growth here. And occasionally what does happen, if you spin this round, and some collectors like this is you get a normal natural head poking out of it as well as the other one. And again, that's another crest, which is a multi-head again. Now this is um, Ikevira Agevoides corduroy eye crest. And here, look, another example of it. You can see that this is cresting here slightly. You come around here, that's a classic line crest through there. And then out of this, you've got just a couple of normal heads popping out. So this is tabuliform? Tabuliform, yeah, that's correct. And normally you'd just be looking at a really flat head. A flat pancake, like a tabletop, yeah. you know, as what it's called. But it, entirely different when you get this. They form it like a dome. Ah, oh, this lovely one, this is menu. Moon Get On Us. This is a Korean one that we got over in Korea. Now, this will, I'll show you how you clean them up a bit here. What happens, this hasn't been cleaned for a while, you should actually get these leaves out of here. It allows the air in, air, you need air movement in these things because they are more prone to rots than some other plants. Is that because the foliage is so close together? Incredibly dense and very hard for air to get in. And it's sort of, this is what succulents like, is they really like to have a bit of air movement around them. So you should really clean this up underneath here. And you can see this one's quite a happy one. A lot of aerial roots come out of here. So you a bit of cleaning in there and you get a blower, a little blower, and you blow those leaves out and it allows the air to go through. So when you're watering these, we're watering them from below? 
Well, or, or using a water, watering can, small watering can, something okay. like that. We're a bit rough here. We really have to water on top. We don't have the time to go around. But optimally, to avoid fungal issues with the stems, it's a good idea to really water these from the bottom. So you'd be dunking this into a bucket, you know, up to about here, let it soak for a couple of minutes, and then it's enough water for a couple of weeks. And these ones, you don't water as much as I think other succulents. I think they're better kept a little drier. Or you could use one of those little watering cans with a spout and yeah, just water. Yeah, and just run around the edges here. Yeah, okay. that's a good way of doing it. And this is a patchy phytum? Yeah, this is a new one called Chiseled Stones. It's a new hybrid and they've got much deeper marks on it. But we do have a crested version here. So that's a first for me. And crests occur in the nursery occasionally. And it happens when you get like a lot of leaf cuttings, one in a hundred or one in 500 might turn out to be a crest. So, so they're a lucky find. So just in general propagation, can we have a look at an example of that? Yeah, we'll go and have a look in a minute. I'll show you a few new ones we've got coming on, young ones. This is uh, Moon Geronis. And this is a uh, plant that originally came from Korea, uh, which is actually like a misspelling of moon goddess. Now, we propagate this one from leaf. So what happens is we get quite a high ratio coming out, which are crested. And again, there are a couple of forms of crest showing up in this one. This will be one with a series of heads going down there, which is like a series of tight compact ones of those. Then you get the classic line of crests. Now, crests are formed, they believe it's really a self deformation from the Mary stem. The Mary stem is in the center of your plant here, and that's the new bud, the apical bud of a plant that comes out, grows out, and everything comes from the apical bud. So, what happens is they reckon there's a phytoplasm gets in there, and a phytoplasm is a mixture between a virus and a bacteria, and they reckon that changes the cell structure to form a line of cells rather than one apical bud. So hence we get our crests. And some people say crestate, crest, cresting, but basically it's a crest. Uh, in trees, you'd call this a witch's broom, where you get one really compact branch. And in nature, a lot of these aberrations are overgrown. So they actually just disappear in time. So it's one branch of a tree, turns out a bit strange, but it ends up being the understory and ultimately disappears. But because in horticulture, people like the weird, the wonderful, and the exotic, and people propagate crests. They actually really like them. Yep. This is uh, Francesca Baldi. Now, this is one of the oldest crests, most common or popular crests, if you want it that way. Uh, it goes browny, golden in color later on, but this has been around for many, many years, and it is still a great looking plant. Now, we've got two in here. This is actually, I believe, Pulodonis. This is an, another Korean import. Somebody has gone to work and made a lot of, how would you say, cuttings out of these, and uh, we've done it. This is uh, Ramelet. Yeah, this is a lovely one. This has actually been around for quite a few years and is reasonably well known about, but not common. And this was a new discovery. Now, I actually don't know whether we found this on our place or we did get it from a friend or something like that, but this is a miniature Aeonium and of the purple type. And, uh, but as you can see, with, it is forming normal heads, but these are miniaturized again. So this is a miniature sort of Aeonium and a miniature cresting form. Again, this is low here. We're keeping a few of these back for cuttings. And you can see again, that's an example of the multi-headed crest here. Really tight, small heads, and then you get many heads here, but not as miniature, obviously. And yeah, Fantasia Carol. Now, people pay a lot of money for this one. It is hard to get, beautifully colored in winter. But this, look at that, John. That's, that's just classic crest. It got the big fan-shaped trunk and the nice big line over here. Classic. So after a while, a lot of these start to look a little bit like um, mini bonsais. Well, they are, and that's actually well, that's actually a really good thing to have because they're tight, compact, small, branched. Look, see this one over the back here. Look at that. He's been in here for oh six or seven years, and he's quite happily growing. Should be cleaned a bit more often, but curved right down over the pot. 
So if you had this one at home, you'd get out with your tweezers and pick out some of these dead. Yeah, that's exactly yep. that's exactly right. You just get your tweezers, give it a bit of a clean up in here, and it'll look really lovely. And that's the small version of that one there. Yeah, that's a young one. This would be 18 months, two years old. So they're the same plant? Exactly. Amazing. And we also have a miniature form of this one as well. This is Grattevaria Debbie. This is reasonably easy crest to do. It's quite prolific. This is a good example to say they don't all grow. Crests often do a rot in the young stages, so you've got to dry them out very well before you pop them up. And this one is Sedum the Brain, and uh, good dark green, very compact one again. Right, this is one of my favourites here. This is Ling Snow. This is a, um, a sub Corymbosa hybrid. Now, what we found with this one is through leaf propagation, we actually get quite a high ratio of crests, and they make a really great crest. It's slow growing, and this one does have a tendency to rot if you don't keep it clean underneath. But what we did find is we've seen to have the gene in this plant now. We do take cuttings, leaf cuttings out of here, and we've actually found that there is a higher ratio of crests coming out of the leaf cuttings. This is a really colourful Pappy's Rose, but there's a couple of oddities in here. This is Pappy's Rose is inclined to get a circular sort of crest around it, and then ultimately it does this, where you go around, and you end up with a hollow centre. Now that's a bit of a trap because it will fill up with water one day and ultimately cause a rot. But in the meantime, good fun to grow and very odd. And brilliant colours as oh, well. Pappy's Rose is a superb colour. The moment you start drying it out or get some cold weather, one of the really, really red ones. Now this is a bit of an exception. This is Menanthes polyphyla in full flower. And over here, we've developed a strain which is crested. And you can see, un unlike a lot of other crested plants, this actually does flower. A lot of crested plants do not flower, but this one does. Look at that one, John, really wide. So they're all pretty much individual. You're not getting two the same in those. Highly variable. Crests vary a lot. There's another crest we got recently. This is Sedum lucidium crest. And you can actually see the real width of it all there. And a nice good long line. And that could be only cut into two plants. Later on, maybe more. So that's the propagation side? Yeah, this is a young one, and that's how you would do it. You take off that side shoot on the right-hand side there, and that's your new plant. We might have a look at that technique later on. Yeah, we will. I'll, I'll definitely show you that one. And this is a classic. This is Gilva. This is well-known, been around for years. But most collectors, real collectors, would have this one. And it's an easy one to do, but it's also easy to dye. It does rot in winter. But again, really nice one. And also several forms of crest. You see in here. It's lovely red tips on it. So the watering on these in winter, you need to be particularly careful. That's when I really would be careful because they don't like too much water on the stems and you've got to be able to dry them out. That's where crests are quite vulnerable. With that tight mass of foliage, they keep the moisture within them for too long. That's why you really do need to do the cleaning out underneath them, under there, and keep them clean and sitting on a bed of gravel. It helps the air movement around them. Very and, important. And growing them outside under cover, like on a covered deck or something that like would, that? That would be better than in a closed up glass house. Yep. In here we have fans, so we can get away with a lot more. It's quite good. This one's Ramelette Crest, and that's a really good shape, that one. Again, really tight line up one of here. This is an old variety, but the crest is not that well known. Look at that lovely S shape there. Beautiful. This is Ecuvira Spring Showers. This is uh, a, na they, a named variety crest. Not a lot of people bother naming them. This was named from Briar Rose. Uh, but again, a beautiful coloured crest. And any cuttings from here generally turn out crested. And this one here is a couple of older plants of Briar Rose. But if you look over here, that's its crested version, which they call Spring Showers. And that's quite old plant. You can see the beautiful colours coming I'll through. Show you Sedum clavatum. This is quite a well-known or popular plant. This is what it looks like when it's young. 
when it's old and starved, it looks like this. And it's really, really cute. Just finishing flowery. Looks stressed. Got that real desert look. But this is the crested version called Tiscatango. And you can sort of see it's multi-headed, bunched up really tight. So it doesn't have that real classic line type crest, but this is what you call a multi-headed sort of crest. But you can tell it's quite different in habit, but still the same plant. This one here is uh, Ragnoni crest. Now, you can see here, we've got a bit of fungal issues happening down here, which is very common with this particular crest. It's not the easiest one to grow because it does rot really easy and has to be kept very dry and or watered from underneath. And over here, this is Green Smile, one of the more prolific crests. This is like a lovely one with two natural heads, then a lovely crested head. And you can see down here, we probably should do a bit of leaf cleaning in here and see the stem, see the big wide stem. And this is a tight version of Green Smile again. And over here, there's Pinwheel Crest. And you can see again, it has some normal heads that are flowering and no flowers on a really tight crest there. This is another Korean variety. This is Mazel. And again, a really tight one with a dark tip. This is another one we got from Korea. This is a Korean discovery. Here you see, this is Green Smile, which propagated from leaf. And you can see, it gets reasonably high ratio of crest heads in here. You can see this will be one that has a normal head and a crested there. And I'd say that'd be a multi-headed crest there as this is inclined to be a bit of a single plant. Another example, out of your leaf cuttings, one just turns up occasionally as a crest. This is a Korean thing. Now, when we got this plant, I didn't realize it was a crest because in later years, it's reverted back to its original form. So I realized that this one here we call Suyon is actually a multi-headed crest. Gilver crest here, a couple of young ones coming through there. There's a new one for us. We got this from Korea recently. This is Polydonis Crest, which I'd never really seen a good one before, that is consistent and reasonably easy to propagate. This one is, that's a good one there. Look at that S, see the S's? That's the style I really like. Loving the colors in that one too. It, they show up really well, the colors there. Crests happen in all species. But this is a bit of uh, Sempervivum at the back here. Just a little bit going there. We don't consider this one as important as some of the Echeveras, but also, they do happen. It's a bit of dark Vader. Crests have been sorted out. This is uh, Ionum Sunburst Crest. Now these actually form, get really quite large and grow into really big plants and eventually they get so big and heavy they are inclined to break apart and I'll show you that later. This is a very old crest, this one, and well known. This is Fred Ives Crest. There's beautiful colours in it. Very compact multi-headed forms, classic forms. Here we go, this one. Echevira Agevortis, corduroy eye. And again, the multi-heads, lines, this is sort of a compact version. And there is actually a miniature form of this one as well, which has probably been derived from here, because you can see this one's getting much more miniature down here and bigger there. This is what we, one of the regular ones we do, Fimbriata Crest. This is very similar to Chocolate Crest, really hard to tell apart actually, but they are, and here's a few more tabular form. Not so table-like, are they? Quite rounded. This is uh, Potosina. This is a uh, type of elegans crest. Here's a couple I'll show you how to break up later. Blue wave crest, you can see that's cresting here. A couple of reverted back to normal. And that's how we go. And that's fantastic fountain crest. There's a couple of those. But next time what we're going to do is I'm going to show you what happens when you get a really big old crest, they fall apart. And I'm going to show you how we propagate them here. Now these are a couple, you can see they're really old and stunted. Now it's actually time to propagate these fellows. So in the next video, we're going to pull apart a few crests and I'm actually going to show you how I like to propagate them. We'll be back with two more videos in this series. One on how to propagate crests from stem cuttings and the second on how to propagate crests from leaf cuttings. There's more information in the notes below the video. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for regular updates on a whole range of succulent plants and indeed a whole range of garden plants. And as always, good luck with your gardening.